All right, so welcome to Sunday, April 8th, 2023. 2023. And uh, this is my review of the Dungeons and Dragons movie, which I had just seen. And uh, yeah, um, I can say overall, I thought it was pretty good. Um, and uh, if I was to give you a rating, I'll save my rating till the end, but um, overall I'd say that it was a more modern day version, but you know, I, I think the script was really well written, honestly, for what it was, like it was very, um, like the jokes, the humor and everything. Uh, I'm going to start with that, like the character elements, the, you know, the standard, um, things that make a movie good or bad, something watchable, you know, and yeah, movies, art, everything like that is very variant from movie to movie, but I'll have to say that overall, uh, the basics, I think they got it right, um, uh, the, the characters were funny, there was nothing excessively preachy about any of the characters, you know, for instance, they weren't, um, really going on and on about a particular political angle or anything like that you know they just let things be as they were for one thing uh and secondly like the dialogue was pretty good overall like i mean it was in-depth enough that i think it wouldn't lose people who are not um uh, veterans of the dungeons and dragons franchises it stayed true to many of the i think elements of the original character uh and character classes well, for instance like the paladin was characteristically a paladin. Um, the thief, the bard. I now okay. I this is the Honor Among Thieves movie, by the way. Um, so I didn't see the first one, and I actually didn't want to see the first one. I don't know how it compares to the first one, but I would say that um, since this is the first time to be watching it, and I've grown a more discerning taste for movies like this now, uh, I think that overall. Um, the standard, my standards here are uh, applicable, generally speaking. Like, I, I think I have a, I can tell when a movie's garbage, uh, you know. Uh, for example, the Doom movie from 2005 was horrible, <laughs> in my opinion, but, you know, whatever. I mean, there were some watchable parts, but when you're, whenever you're um, paying tribute or homage to, like, a video game franchise or something like that, please do it right. I, I don't know why for so long. You know, there's a lot of like video game or like board game or game related movies that are just done horribly bad. And uh, I don't know why that is. I think that whoever's working on the script doesn't spend a lot of time researching the script, the characters, and the actors aren't great actors generally. Or sometimes they are considered great actors, but they just don't know how to give the right voice to characters in the movie. I think that was an older phenomenon. Maybe that's getting better, maybe not. I have yet to see the Mario Brothers movie, though the Mario Brothers movie is a pretty animated movie, um, so Pixar style, I guess, so it's a little different, but at least this live action version of Dungeons and Dragons, I thought it was not only tolerable, but it was actually really good, you know? Um, uh, the, the character, Chris Pine was the bard, and he managed to play a song. I don't know if he played many songs in, in the previous movie, but he didn't make it overbearing at the point, but the bard's usually a comedic character, like, uh, that boosts morale and has some, I forgot, you know what, it's been a long time since I delved into the, uh, characteristics of each class, though, like, the adjacent types of games that I played back in the day that had character classes, also, um, you share, a lot of things were similar, you shared amongst all of them, uh, the tiefling, which is a unique, uh, class to Dungeons and Dragons, I thought, I was happy that they're represented the tiefling there, um, the tiefling uh, druid, so to speak, and just uh, anybody who's not familiar with the game, and but who's probably read Wikipedia right now, if they're fascinated by getting into the game, the tiefling is a demonic character, uh, or a half-fiend character, which is a lower planes race, um, so, you know, they're, they've made bargains with humans, and so, so and so on the lore goes, uh, if you get into the game. Um, but yeah, um, the red wizard or necromancer type, uh, villain was good, um, and I was happy 
that I'll just actually jump back. Uh, Michelle Rodriguez played the barbarian, um, which the barbarian character was like I, she she's always been like that kind of like really tough character um, from like years and years ago. I think I first she's like in her early forties now. I think it was her mid forties, but she was like she's like super athletic. Like I, I and I think in the previous movies I saw her in the last movie I honestly saw her in it was the first Avatar movie. And I really didn't watch many of the Fast and Furious movies because honestly, I can't stand them. I don't know if I'm still like Vin Diesel fans or I don't. know. I mean, I watched them with kind of like, all right, you know, just check this box off the list of movies to watch. But um, to be quite honest, I I'm not like a ultra Vin Diesel or Dwayne Johnson fan or anything like that. So um, I mean, I like I like Dwayne Johnson. I like The Rock, and you know, I like his motivationals. Uh, elements or whatever when he's working out and getting tough and all that stuff but you know um, and it's charisma but like overall it, you know their movie their acting is kind of like leaves a lot for me to be desired so I kind of stayed away from her roles in the Fast and Furious franchise which is still going on and which I still believe she has two that she's working on currently um, so uh, yeah so she was um yeah, like, pretty good overall, and, like, you know, again, very, you know, good choreographed moves. Like, I do appreciate her uh, ability to swing an axe and to kick bad guys' butts. And, you know, that's the thing. With her, it's believable because that's, like, been her, like, role and her persona for, I, I don't even know how long. Like, ever since I've seen her, she's been, like, you know, tough, tough girl, kind of, like, you know, just beating everyone up. <laughs> But she, she plays those roles good, just like Jason Statham plays his Jason Statham roles good, like he did in that Operation Fortune movie, which I reviewed not too long ago. Okay, so to get back to um, anything regarding uh, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie, and what else? Oh yeah, the wizard character was good, uncharacteristically, like, I guess like, kind of like a pretty good wizard character overall, you know? Um, but, you know, I definitely thought that, uh, they were, uh, you know, they played the, like, the spells that they talked about. It's been a while since I've played any Dungeons & Dragons. I was a dungeon, I played Dungeons & Dragons actually uh, in a, the old-fashioned format back in, like, 2016 last, and I did it for a few times, and, you know, I liked it, but uh, honestly, the Dungeon Master... I, I, ne I never could get used to the dungeon master, the general dungeon master style of control. I didn't, like, especially when, like, somebody really enjoyed control uh, as a dungeon master, they, I, I really wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, and, you know, because, like, a lot of times back in the day, I remember dungeon masters would look like they're on the border of abusing their power, so to speak, if someone's declared dungeon master. And I guess it's the same thing with anybody. You could have strong dungeon masters, you could have weak dungeon masters, you know, you can have strong vice presidents, you could have weak vice presidents. I don't know, like, there's something about that. It reminded me of that um, House of Cards saying about vice presidents, whatever. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, you, you know, like, the storytelling was good. You know, the live action was good, and I thought it didn't cater to, to dumbness too much. Like, the dialogue was actually... Like, it wasn't dumb. It was fairly intelligent overall for a movie that relied heavily on the tropes of, like, the action team. Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy kind of action team was put together, except there was no, like, group character, which, thank goodness, because, like, you know, I wasn't a fan. I'm not a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy, really. Um, but the, you know, again, I, I thought it was well put together and... They had, and again, there's spoilers in there, you know, Michelle Rodriguez's character dies, and she's revived, and, you know, that, even that, even there's, like, a little bit of a tropey, cliched element to her revival in the storyline. The storyline is a bit cliched, but it's executed well. Again, you can have, I think you can have a cliched storyline with, with somewhat of a cliched villain, but if they play the villain well, 
you know, if they have the right facial expressions, right, right body language, the right dy dynamism, then that really helps make the movie, you know. The right graphics team definitely made the movies like the, you know, CGI was definitely up to par. It, it was a scene where they were all uh, going through a maze that um, the, the city of Neverwinter was turned into. Uh, and that was actually, I thought that was actually a fun part of the movie, like legit fun. Like, you know, you could say that things were done well and things seemed like they were fun, but this was legit fun when there was groups of uh, characters trying to escape through the maze. And it did bring me back to the kind of like Harry Potter maze. Um, I forgot which one that was, but Harry Potter uh, and his uh, f friends, his team, were in a maze situation. And I, I guess that was maybe the blood something or whatever I don't remember <laughs> so, Harry Potter fans would kill me but um it gave me those vibes but it was also like it, they, they had a uh the mimic chest in there right like I think someone promised that in every Dungeons and Dragons movie they would have to have a mimic in there that's just like any Dungeons and Dragons lore any game video game anything like that has to have a mimic and they definitely stay true to the mimic um, it reminds me of Ultima, the old Ultima 6 games. But the Ultima 6 was like my first legit like serious RPG back in the day um, that I remember playing and like just losing hours and hours and hours and hours and God knows how long I played that game for uh, as a as a youngin. I, and in thinking back to then and then like projecting to now, it's, it feels like it's so strange it's been that long. It's been years and years. but. They had mimics there, like in a, you know, when I, you know, this should have probably been known, but I, when I compare uh, the characters in that game to now, like, it seems like a lot of games had similar kind of dynamics, like character, class dynamics, things like that. Ultima had um, the paladin. Ultima was fashioned after Dungeons and Dragons, very much in many ways, um, like a, a lot, you know, video game action one. It was also fashioned after Dragon Quest, a, a, bunch, a bunch of games had character classes back in the day. Uh, they still have character classes, so um, the barbarian, I think culture was explained a little bit. I think if I saw the first movie, if it was as good as this movie, then it might have gone into the barbarian classes. I might have to go back and watch that. Uh, there was a fat red dragon scene where there was a fat red dragon kind of uh, killing things, um, and that I thought was pretty good. Like, that, uh, you know, for uh, first of all, I didn't you know everyone does like a red dragon kind of guarding treasure thing and that reminded me like the about the desolation of smog a little bit uh in terms of movies uh, smog was guarding his pile of treasure his infinite treasure pile except in this version smog was really fat <laughs> the dragon that represented smog i forgot what his, what his name was it began with a t they knew that dragon specifically of course the mage knows that dragon um but mage slash sorcerer slash whatever uh, knows that dragon. Um, and again, the undead element, the only thing that I thought could have been done better was like the undead character storyline. Again, that may have been fleshed out in the first movie, but like, you know, I, I kind of got, I kind of got it and I felt that it was, that was just shoved in there. Um, and it, it did, they did have a little bit of an element of, you know, Oh, the backstory of that. They, they went into the backstory of the undead element, which tied to the backstory of the paladin, um, the undead villain element. But overall, I thought that, you know, again, it, it, like I, I thought the Lord of the Rings traversal through Mordor kind of had a more epic feel to it. it. Had a lot more of an epic feel to it. This had a, a, not an epic feel, but this had an adventurous feel. But there was an epic feel possibly because Lord of the Rings was so long and split over several movies that the conclusion uh, needed to be satisfying in many ways um, uh, and yeah but in this case in this particular um, situation I felt that they could have made this a bit more epic too like you know they the end that storyline may have been explored a little more in terms of character depth like again in the first movie and in maybe because in the first movie the flashback they had to the first movie that the undead character uh, uh the red wizard character wasn't very um you know was revealed to be evil towards the end of the movie i guess or mysterious towards the middle of the first movie in this case she was revealed very early to be uh evil but like the lore of the undead her motivation specifically other than 
being kind of like the harbinger of the lich's will, uh, Zastam or whatever, uh, you know, uh, Sophina, etc. Like, I, you know, again, they need. I felt that like her, she met her untimely and uh, a little too not abruptly. Like her, her, um, her kind of fighting thing. This is one thing also I didn't like her. This fighting style, especially hers toward the end where they all kind of team kind of ganged up to her remind me too much of Avengers and I kind of have like a bad taste in my mouth or anything like more MCU related in fact I haven't reviewed anything MCU related I don't think I will review anything MCU related and the problem with this is that I don't want this to mimic the MCU in any way uh, because I don't want it to leave a bad taste in people's mouth okay well, that was my review, um, and uh, if you like it, like, subscribe. What did you think about this movie? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching my review, and I'll see you later and next time. I think I'm probably going to catch um, uh, the Keanu Reeves movie, uh, John Wick 4. I've got to catch it. It's a longer movie, and I need to make time, so I'll, maybe next week. So I'll see you around.